been trying to move a mountain on my way to get to you Skinny dipping in an ocean blue It's an uphill kind of battle to make you see my point of view Is it worth it? I ain't got a clue Sometimes you shut yourself in the foot not to go to Vietnam Sometimes if it's too good to you from the Night Dreams Talk Radio Network Newsroom, I'm Guy Ticker with the strange news. Road Ghost, Phantom Hitchhiker. Road ghosts are believed to be one of the most alarming paranormal sightings. Witnesses tend to genuinely believe they are speaking to actual people on the side of busy carriageways. In some cases, it's been reported that road ghosts join people in their cars and even Have a conversation. I'm Guy Ticker. The Strange News is brought to you by Night Dreams Talk Radio Network. Do you have a strange story? Contact us at nightdreamstalkradio.com. The Disclosure 2.0 Conference in Washington, D.C. with the National Press Club event is June 10th through June 12th. Dr. Greer will share explosive witness testimony and analysis with a call for the government to open up all files on the UFO issue and get to the bottom of the secrecy. For more information on the Disclosure 2.0 conference, go to this website, www.seriousdisclosure.com.
You are listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio Network, the home of Night Dreams Talk Radio, with Gary Anderson, syndicated worldwide. Paranormal Talk Radio, like you remember. Wednesday already. I can't believe. Here it is, Wednesday. The whole week has gone by fast. That's what happens. Well, uh huh. When you have Monday and Tuesday off. Well, I hope everybody's had a great day today. The weather down here in beautiful Gig Harbor, Washington, is like, well, sunny today, but kind of chilly. Kind of can't wait for spring and all that stuff. Well, contact in the desert. I wonder how many of you guys are going to be going to it. I am going to go. I had something I've been wanting to do the last couple of years, and I plan to go this year. I, I hope to meet some of you guys down there. Well, in the news, a mega asteroid, twice the size of the Eiffel Tower, is going to go past the Earth this week. And that is kind of like scary. You know, you, you think of ways if it hit, because if it hit, that would be a life ending event on this planet and you know there's a lot of ways to die and today i was thinking well if i was gonna die when what would be the good way to die and you know jc i came to conclusion the best way to die is well in bed dreaming <laughs> i thought you was gonna say in bed something else but i th- come on we're a g-rated show we're not x-rated I thought you were going to say eating crackers or something, but yeah. Um, well, maybe you eat crackers and sardine <laughs> in bed, but I don't. Well, you know. Anyway, um, yes, these these um, asteroids and and uh, the, they're coming through. It gets scary and scary, especially the ones coming in behind the sun. Those are the ones we can't see to the last minute. But yeah, I don't even think we can do anything about it anyway. No, there isn't. You know, I guess the best thing you can do is, well, just pretend it's not going to happen. I mean, you know, you could just step out of your house and get hit by lightning. Or you get hit by a meteorite that gets through that's just big enough to hit you in the head. Oh, yeah, or you could die from eating smoky, oh, I'm not going to say it. Anyway, the Smoky Mountain Bigfoot Festival is returning to the Townsend uh, in Tennessee, and that is May 6th of this year. It is, and you know, that's the same date that they got one going on at the old Salt Fork. Yeah, but which one would you want to go, Tennessee or South Fork? Probably the one that's, you know, maybe 25 miles from my house. Well, you know, they're saying we better watch out because there's nothing we can do about it. But, you know, remember I keep telling people that the currents coming from the equator going up to Europe and all that stuff is kind of like slowing down. Well, now it's near collapse and it is dropping in temperature. And when that drops in temperature, guess what's going to happen in Europe? Uh, yeah, you're talking about the Gulf Stream. That that lit- literally regulates the temperature in many places in this Earth. Uh, I mean, really, all the way from the Gulf, well, from the Gulf all the way up to uh, the UK. Yeah, well, you know what? You could go ice skating in the Thames. You know that. That happened, you know, back years ago. Yeah, it was 1800 sometime, I believe, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Also in the news, they found... A hidden chapter, the lost hidden chapter of the Bible. It was found after 1,500 years. Yes, i seen that. They were using, what, UV lights or something, I believe, and that they found it. But uh, that's fascinating. It is. I really am curious what it says. Yeah, yeah, will he let us see it or will he let us see all of it? Or let us know what it says. That's the, the scary part. Exactly. Yes, I, I agree. <laughs> well, can cons- not tell. Conspiracy people are saying the governments are destroying food for a reason. But a great big uh, dairy factory in Texas blew up here this yesterday. Oh, I did not see. I didn't see that one. But, uh, hey, that's 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 no joke. Uh, Just hope not many people got hurt. Well, yeah, well, it was leveled the whole area, the building and everything. It was huge. Now, believe me, if it's cow farts and methane gas, I don't know. I'm not going to drink milk anymore. Well, it sounds like you might be chocolate milk there, Gary. Yeah. We're going to be right back with our guest tonight. We're going to talk about, well, Bigfoot. A lot of people think Bigfoot are friendly creatures. They give off orbs. They'll telecommunicate with you. They would never hurt mankind. 
Well, I got a different story here tonight. So stay tuned. Check out our website at www.nightdreamstalkradio.com. We're going to be right back, so stay tuned. The ninth Annual Contact in the Desert Conference happens the weekend of June 2nd at the beautiful Renaissance Resort near Palm Springs, California. Join me, George Norrie, to discover what's next from speakers such as Graham Hancock, Richard Dolan, Nick Pope, Stephen Bassett, and over 50 other top researchers. Come make contact with new friends and discover the latest fascinating information from the fields of UFO studies, artificial intelligence, psychic phenomenon, and more. Reserve your seat now at contactinthedesert.com. If you're not watching us live on YouTube, you're missing a lot. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and become a Night Dreamer. You are tuned into Gary Anderson on Night Dreams Talk Radio. Now, get ready for that real ride in UFOs and the strange. And now, here's Gary, coming to you live from his studio in beautiful Gig Harbor, Washington. No, it is not raining and not hail and not thunder. That's all a figment of your guys' imagination. It's actually quite beautiful here in Gig Harbor. Well, tonight, we're going to be talking with uh, Michael about... Bigfoot, his experience, and what happened with him with Bigfoot. Uh, JC, what can you tell the listeners about our guest? Well, our guest is Michael Bluler. Now, he is a former veteran and, well, he's an avid deer hunter for many, many years from Mississippi. Now, all through his life, Gary, he has never believed in Bigfoot, thought everybody was crazy and talked about it until his first encounter in 2020. Well, Michael, welcome to the show, and I want to say thank you four times to the service of our country. Thank you, sir. How are you? I am doing good. I, you know, uh, Abbott, you know, deer, I tell you what I like about deer. I never could acquire the taste, because I'm a city boy, of deer meat. But one of my friends actually makes jerky out of deer meat, and he gave me a bag of jerky, and I was eating, and I said, this is the best jerky I ever had. And he goes, yep. by the way, it was deer. Oh, absolutely. Um, I do the same thing. I have a de- I have a dehydrator at the house. I make a little jerky from time to time. Well, you you go out hunting a lot. I mean, how many years have you been out hunting? Did you start out as a young person with your father? or Was it something afterwards? What got you into hunting? Uh, actually, it was my dad. Uh, I'm 47 years old, and I want to say... Uh, I've been out in the woods with my dad ever since I've been probably five or six years old. Wow. And it, uh, during that whole time, you never, never encountered going out with your dad, a Bigfoot or any, you know, any a hint of Bigfoot, have you? No, not at all. Nothing like that. Heard some strange stuff, uh, you know, that I, you know, come, I'll get to that uh, during the encounter, but uh, I've heard some strange stuff, but never. Uh, the old men back in the old days uh, used to say, you know, you need to be out of the woods, you know, and all that because, you know, the booger might get you. But we always just took that as, you know, like the boogeyman, the folklore thing, you know. Well, think about this, Michael. How many people go missing in the woods? I mean, if you look at, you know, statistics, there's a lot of people that vanish and, you know, hunters, backpackers and all this stuff. And, you know, I can take it. You're, you're walking out there. If you break your leg or even break your ankle and you're miles out to nowhere, that's, you're done pretty much. You're not going to get back. And, no, and, and it's, uh, it's huge. You know, you hear about a lot in like state parks and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, it's getting big time right now. Um, as far as like people going missing and stuff like that. And I think a lot of it might have to do a little bit with Sasquatch or dog man or whatever. Well, whatever these creatures are, it, it, again, you know, I, I can honestly tell you, like we talked a little bit before we went on there, I had an encounter. I know what they look like and how they react. And like I was telling you, Michael, I've interviewed literally uh, going on 50 years, probably a thousand guests about Bigfoot through all these years. 
And the majority of them, they have this idea that they give off orbs, they telecommunicate, they would never hurt mankind, and they like trinkets and they like peanut butter and jam sandwiches. Well, I can tell you this. Uh, what happened to me was nothing nice. It's it's kind of hard for me to jump on board in my situation. Um, I do think that these things are special as far as like uh, maybe, you know, te telepathic stuff. I didn't have that act happen to me, but uh, w what I had happen to me was anything short of hell. Yeah, that's the scary part. And when you go for you something like that, you know, I, just like me, I, I never thought these ever, ever believed. I never believed that they existed. I, I thought, you know, is this a folklore? You know, exactly. and, and I watched, you know, a movie it was made. Oh, God, the guy who played Cheyenne Bodie, you know, uh, in the old Western show. Uh, it, back in the 60s, he made a movie about Bigfoot where he was tore apart by Bigfoot. And, you know, me and my friends were watching that and laughing our heads off at the drive-in. Yeah, nothing like that could ever exist out in the woods. And I've been out, you know, I grew up just like you, not hunting, but my dad was a backpacker. So we would go out during the summers and we would go out like Mount Rainier. We go to Idaho, Montana. We go miles in the woods. And, you know, and I never had an encounter. I never believed that these things could ever exist. I don't know if it's that I didn't believe that they exist. It just, um, I can remember like as a little kid, like seeing on like the freak shows, like the Patterson Gimlin footage, but I don't know if I didn't believe they exist. It just really wasn't on my radar, I guess. Uh, maybe that was a, a problem out Northwest, but not Mississippi, nothing like that at all. Oh yeah. Well, you know, that's the whole point. So you, you know, went out well, all these years with your father hunting. You learned, you know, survival basically out in the woods. And then, you know, you go to Iraq. And I take this. This is, can't happen to you when you came back, right? Or was it before you went? This happens 16 or 17 years after I got out. So, I mean, and you probably like me. You were in firefights and stuff like that. I yep. hope, And I, I hope not you weren't, I but. I was with the 101st Airborne. Yeah. So, I mean, here you are, a, a seasoned veteran in combat yep. situations. And uh, can, can you lay it out? What were you doing when you saw this creature? What What did you mind think? Okay. Uh, I can, I, I'm going to go ahead and paint a picture for you real quick. Uh, Mississippi. Uh, we have we, we have a, a we have an archery and a rifle season just about like everybody else does, but in Mississippi they have two dog seasons. And when I say two dog seasons, it's where they actually use hounds to hunt deer. I know that's going to sound strange to a lot of people. Uh, it's it's deeply seated down here in the South. I'm not a big fan of it. I'm more of a steel hunter. Uh, this particular day this happened to me, I had to go two counties up into a wildlife management area. And uh, when you're in a wildlife management area, it's still hunting only. And it was a spot that I hunted pretty much the majority of my life. Uh, it was called Leaf River Management Area. Um, I, I used to get really deep in there. Uh, it's nothing but dirt roads going in and out it's probably about 30 miles to go slap across it it's it's not the biggest in the world but it, you know it's it's vast forest so uh there was this particular spot that i used to like to hunt um there was this field gary it was uh it was a ryegrass field it was probably about a hundred yards wide and probably about a thousand yards long and there was this power line that used to run adjacent to it that ran north and south. Um, everybody and their brother used to just hunt on the rye, the, the rye grass field. I didn't do that because deer in Mississippi, the hunting pressure is so high. These deer are mostly nocturnal. So if you're going to have any success, you have to hunt. Uh, you have to hunt like a corridor or something like that. Uh, they're, they're very slick. And what it was, I used to 
go down this power line north of this field and get about 200 yards behind it. And uh, I always had a lot of luck because I would catch the deer right before dark going to that field. And, you know, I would kill a lot of deer like that. And uh, it was a normal day. It was just a normal day. There was nothing out the, nothing out the ordinary. Uh, there was this particular pine tree that I liked to get up because it didn't have a lot of limbs on it and I could get up really high. Uh, Mississippi, I also got to tell your audience this, Mississippi, the woods are very, very thick. It's nothing but nasty stuff. Uh, a lot of gallberry bushes, a lot of, lot of briar, stuff like that. So uh, you can't really hunt off the ground. You have to get up that way you can see over the underbrush. Um, it's so thick in Mississippi that they have to do prescribed burns every other year just to kind of control it a little bit. Uh, we live in a subtropical climate down here. So, yeah, it was just a normal day. Um, I'm up in this tree, and I'm facing west, and I'm hunting the power lines. You know, I'm, tr I'm trying to catch something coming, coming across west from the power lines. I'm on the east side of the power lines. I usually, uh, Gary, I usually get up really high that way. I, you know, I get up high enough to where I, I have to put a safety harness on because if I, if something happens and I fall, I'm, I'm in a lot of trouble. Um, and I always get up early this time of the year. It's getting dark, probably about five thirty. you know, pitch black, dark, probably a quarter to six, but it, you know, the, 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 the sun is setting at probably, I don't know. 515 somewhere around in there and uh i always get up super early because i like to get my smell out the woods I, i'm probably up the tree around one o'clock so i'm sitting there and uh i don't have any kind of action and it, it you know i just thought it was weird to me because this is usually you know a good spot because it's a corridor um it, you know at least usually i'll see like a doe or something something i'm not going to shoot and it was just very strange. I had no action at all. And I want to say it was probably about in between 4.20, 4.30, I hear something behind me. Um, it sounds heavy. And um, we have a lot of hogs, too, not just deer. We have a lot of wild boar. Um, it's coming in behind me. And it sounds heavy. I wasn't really making out to see if it was bipedal or not. And I kept trying to look behind me. and uh, But the woods is so thick. And it's coming, but it's not coming really fast. It's just kind of like moseying on through, but not fast. More, more like Neanderton, just very slow. And it gets, you know, this goes on for about five minutes. And it gets on the side of me, probably about 40 yards away in the woods. But like I said, it. Even even though I'm up high and I'm looking over everything, it's so thick in there I cannot see what it is, and it stops. And when it stops, I hear like heavy breathing, almost like labored breathing. And that goes on for about I don't know two minutes or so, and everything got quiet. I don't hear it anymore. So I'm thinking to myself, it was either a hog or maybe it was the heavy breathing part. I'm thinking maybe. It was a deer that might have got shot, and it's like the blood filling up in the lungs kind of thing. I didn't know. I was I had a million things going on in my mind, and I finally, uh, I'm just like, well, well, maybe it just slipped out and got away from me, and I just didn't hear it. Now, I got to ask you a question, Michael. When you were hearing it, was it sound like it was close by to you? It was. Uh, it was coming from behind me, but when it got like 30 yards on the side of me, um, it sounded really close, but I was trying to make out what it was. But but the like I said, the underbrush was so thick, I couldn't figure out what it was. Uh, and it just stopped. And I heard the breathing, and then the breathing stopped. So I'm, like, puzzled. You know, I got a million things going in my mind. It's probably the biggest buck of my life. And, oh, my God, it probably slipped out, and I just didn't. You know, that's what I had in my mind. So I just kind of blew it off. And, uh you got to remember, I'm facing west. I'm in uh, the power lines are in front of me, running north and south. Um, 
So it gets to be the time of the day where you're completely being blinded by the sun. It's not behind the trees yet, but it's over the trees. And I'm just completely blinded. And I'm pulling my, you know, I'm pulling my hat down that way I can see. And all of a sudden, about 150 yards north on the power lines from me, I see something black. Completely black. Didn't know what it was. It was on all fours. And I'm looking and I'm trying to make it out, but I just can't figure out what it is. So I put my, you know, I put him in the scope and I had to power my scope up a little bit to look at it. And uh, by the time I got my gun on it and everything, the thing was sitting down and it's face, it's facing west, just like I'm facing. And uh, I powered it up. And the first thing I seen was the hair on the back. You know, I'm thinking bear the whole time because we do have black bear in Mississippi um, it, we don't have a, a big abundance, but we do have some, they were released by the state years ago. And, uh, I'm looking through the hair and, um, I'm kind of puzzled because I'm looking for like, I'm looking for like an undercoat of like a bear or a dog or something like that. And it's nothing like that. It's like, uh, it's like human hair. It's like uh Nikki six for Motley Crue. Oh, wow. You know, long black hair on the back. And you can see in the hair, you can see the skin. The skin was ashy gray. So I panned up to the head, and I seen the top of the head. And that's when I kind of got freaked out a little bit because the head uh, didn't look like what you would think a bear would be. It was conical shaped. And uh, I can remember the hair on top of the head was, was short and spiky. It wasn't like the hair on the back, nothing like that. So, I, you know, I'm sitting there and... Give me just a minute, guys. My throat's getting a little dry. That happens when I tell this encounter. Okay, that's no problem. When you saw this, though, and at that point, you, you your brain's not digesting it. Because I know when I had my encounter, it, I had a brain fart, to be honest with you. And, and and I'm sure you did, too. And your mind's trying to digest what you're seeing. And it, it it's telling you, no, that can't be what it could maybe be. And, and uh, how concerned were you at that point? Man, I was pretty concerned, but it was my mind. Like you said, my mind couldn't process it. I didn't know if this was a bear, but the way it was sitting down, uh, it, it, it was very strange. It didn't look like what I would picture the way a bear would sit down. I mean, it was it was facing sitting down on its butt, but fa and his his knees were up, and his left hand was digging in the dirt. And I panned on it and I seen a hand, you know, I didn't see a paw and I didn't know if this was some idiot in the woods playing a joke on me or I, I, Sasquatch is still not coming to mind yet. You know, I don't know what it is. Um, I'm pretty sure at this point I'm in shock. Um, maybe I think I might be hallucinating. Uh, you know, I didn't know what it was. Can I ask you a question? You yes. were in firefights. Yes. And I was in firefights in Nam. Uh, did, did any of that come like back to you when you saw this too? Because you, you know, you put your gun up to it with a scope and you're looking at it and you're trying to figure out what it is. I mean, did it, it, did it scare you? It scared me. It scared me pretty bad. Uh, I, I didn't get any flashbacks from Iraq, but, um, it was just, I didn't, uh, I, I was just trying to make sense of it, you know? And, uh, I noticed that the sun you know, it's, you know, in probably 30 minutes, I'm, it's going to start getting dark and whatever this is in front of me, uh, I don't want to be in the woods with it, whatever it is. So just out of pure desperation, I yelled at it, you know, just, Hey, you know, just real loud. Like, Hey, that's brave of you, Michael. Yes. Yeah. That was when brave. I, when I did that, this thing, whatever it was, put his hands on the ground and popped up on two feet. Like it was nobody's business. <laughs> I got to ask you a question here. Okay. Yes. When it popped up, did you feel like you almost went in your pants? Because it, you, when I saw what I saw, it was bigger than a guy. It was, uh, I'm surprised I didn't soil myself to be honest with you, but I was in, <laughs> I was in survival mode. Um, he got, 
when I did that, he started doing like a, uh, he wasn't rocking back and forth, but he was walking in like a, like a 30 yard little, like, um, oblong circle. He was scanning the woods. He was looking down the power lines, North and South. He, that's why I think he didn't know I was there because he was trying to find the source of the sound. And when I hunt, I, I'm never skylined. I, you know, I learned that in the military. You don't, you, you don't skyline yourself. Uh, you, you always need to be blended in. I wasn't, I wasn't sticking out. You know, I had the whole face mask on and, you know, I, I was blended in with the trees behind me. And every now and then he would look my way and his eyes would get really big, but he wouldn't look directly at me. Now, Michael, we need to take a break. It's about three minutes long. Yeah. And then I got to ask you some questions and we can also then go on with what you encountered. But we're going to be back with Michael, his encounter from hell uh, with a Bigfoot. So stay tuned. You're listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio. Check out our website at www.nightdreamstalkradio.com. If you didn't subscribe to our YouTube channel, please do. It's important because our sponsors like that. And we'll be right back. Take a journey of adventure and discovery for the enigmatic giants of the forests. Read On the Trail of Bigfoot by Mike Dupler. The author himself describes it this way. Having found possible Sasquatch evidence, namely trees driven into the ground upside down, thought to be territory markers, led me to investigate this creature in my native Ohio. Several years and many forays into Bigfoot territory, I have found incredible evidence which inspired my book On the Trail of Bigfoot. Bigfoot is alive and has many fantastic abilities. The evidence is out there for all to see, but you need to know what to look for. My book will inspire those who have answered the call to seek this elusive creature, the Bigfoot. The truth is out there. Read On the Trail of Bigfoot by Mike Dupler. Available now at Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, and IndieBound.org. The ninth Annual Contact in the Desert Conference happens the weekend of June 2nd at the beautiful Renaissance Resort near Palm Springs, California. Join me, George Nori, to discover what's next from speakers such as Graham Hancock, Richard Dolan, Nick Pope, Stephen Bassett, and over 50 other top researchers. Come make contact with new friends and discover the latest fascinating information from the fields of UFO studies, artificial intelligence, psychic phenomenon, and more. Reserve your seat now at contactinthedesert.com. Hi, this is Val Von Torn of Metatron Power and Light. You're listening to Gary Anderson and Night Dreams Talk Radio. And we are back with Michael. I, I, I'm telling you, you know, what you've seen, I, I would be, you know, terrified, you know, to be up on that tree. Now, a lot of people say that Bigfoot eyes glow red. I didn't see that in my encounter. Did you see any glowing weird color eye color? Um, no, no, uh, actually his, his eyes were solid, solid black, like a shark's eyes. It was like, it was, uh, when I get on with the encounter, I will tell you what I seen close up. But, uh, so anyways, he's doing like this, uh, 30 yard little oblong circle looking through the woods and every now and then he would look my way and his eyes would get really big. And, uh, but it was almost like he couldn't figure out what it was. So for the second time, people tell me I'm crazy, but I looked at him and I said, I'm right here, you know, thinking he's going to go run off or something like that. That did not happen. Uh, you see like the Patterson Gimlin footage and, all, you know, all these Bigfoot videos you see, it's always them running away or walking into the woods. They don't want to be seen. That didn't happen with me. He walked straight to me from 150 yards away, straight to me. And you, wait a minute, now you had this rifle. When he was doing that, be honest yep. here, did you think about pulling the trigger? Uh, I did. Um, I'm, I'm going to get to that part. Uh, I just I, I just want to tell, I just want to let your not, audience know the whole thing, you know. So he starts walking to me. And when he's walking to me, it looks so weird. Um, I unbolted, I had a seven millimeter Magnum. I unbolted the rifle just to make sure I didn't dummy up and not have one in the chamber. And I slammed the bolt back shut. And from that time, from 150 yards, he starts walking to the time I undid my gun, looked down, made sure I had one in there. 
what, four or five seconds, he was already 30 yards in front of me. How do you explain that? That is scary. That's how I can explain it. Really easy. Uh, the best way I can tell your audience, uh, when he, when he started walking to me, uh, it looked so paranormal. Uh, it didn't look like a normal walk. It looked like he was on a pair of snow skis. That's what I tell everybody. The motions he was making while he was walking it was very long strides and it was very seriously, uh, creepy looking. So he gets to be about, he gets to be about 30 yards in front of me, but he never would get any closer, but he would never get, you know, any further away. It was like he was staying on his ground, but he didn't want to get any closer than that. So I automatically put, put the rifle back on him and I looked at the rifle and it was just a big old black blur. So I had to power my scope back down and that's when I really got the scene. Um, his eyes, we'll get to the eyes. The eyes was jet black. Uh, it was like looking into the abyss. Um, they weren't completely round. Uh, they had a little bit of an almond shape to them. Uh, he had the he had the pronounced brow ridge. His nose was hooded like ours, but uh, much much wider, much thicker. Uh, the face, the face was blacker than the rest of the skin on the body. Um, it was almost like uh, it was almost like somebody took a, a like a a paintbrush with like onyx black paint and painted his face, but that was his natural color. Um, he looked, uh, very, very, uh, he had very high cheekbones, very, very high cheekbones, almost native American looking in the face, but more, more, uh, Neanderthal looking in the face. Prehistoric. More Prehistoric. Yes. Yeah. Um, his hands were huge. His hands were huge. Um, his fingers looked like small, uh, God, it's the, the best way to describe his hands, his fingers looked like bananas. They were huge. His hands uh, were so so long and so thick that it looked like he can grab somebody on the top of the head and just squeeze their head and your yeah. head would implode. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Here's another thing why I think that their fingers are long on their hands and the way their hands are. What I noticed, and I don't know if you noticed that, when I saw it run that time, I noticed that when it went across the creek and came towards us, it was running between two legs and four legs. Yeah. And I think what they do is they go into that two leg, four leg for gaining speed. So when you mentioned that it was kind of like paranormal like look when he, he all of a sudden came towards you fast. Did you notice it? Did it run between two and four legs? No, he was, wa it was like, uh, when he was walking to me, he had his, uh, he, he wasn't like crouched down going to, 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 you know, with his hands, it, it, he was walking straight up, but it was like the strides he was taking. It, 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 it looked like he was on snow skis. It was just, it was very, very weird. It was, uh, and he covered a lot of ground on two legs in just a matter of four seconds. I mean, it's just unworldly. I had enough time to look down at my gun, make sure I had one in and look back up. And there he is. Right. I, don't, I don't know. It was almost like he was gliding. Yeah. That made yeah. I think it's because they, they have a huge, you know, uh, God, that their steps are so huge compared to a human. Yes. So, I mean, so, the, you know, for what it would take you to walk 10 feet, it would take it like one or two steps for it. Yes. Um, I can see everything, man. I can see the emotions in his face. Like, uh, I don't, it's, it's hard to explain. You can tell he was thinking because, uh, I don't know. I don't know if maybe he's never seen a human like close up before or anything like that. But I can tell you this, there was a couple things that he did, uh, like he shuffled a certain way or made a certain facial expression where it scared me, and I would draw down on him with my gun. And every time I draw down on him, he would turn his head to the side and look at me with one eye, and it was, it, it was almost like he was giving me the look like, don't you do it. Do <laughs> not do that. Do now, not. I, I got to ask you another question. 
I noticed when it got close to us, the most horrible stench I ever encountered. It, it was like feces. It was like if you got the most uh, hottest pepper imported from Africa and mixed it with urine, feces, and the hottest pepper in the world, mixed it in a blender. <laughs> That's the smell I smelled. It was so bad that me and my friend, we couldn't even breathe. I mean, literally, it was like the first week of June up in the Canadian Rockies. It was still, you know, snow on the ground up there. It was chilly yet. And I'll tell you, it, you couldn't breathe through your throat because it burnt your throat. You tried breathing through your nose. It actually burnt your nose. Did you encounter anything like that? Gary, I get that question all the time, man. Um, maybe the wind was in my favor that day. I didn't get any smell at all. You're I lucky. Don't, I, I don't know. But I do hear that a lot, that they, that they have a very rancid smell to them. Yeah, this, uh, this was a smell, I believe me, I have smelled pretty bad things before. The, the, that is like the number one foul smell. So you lucked out on that one. Yeah, that's. Um, I'm glad I didn't smell it because I was, I was already sick to my stomach because of nerves and stuff like that. So uh, th- uh, we had basically had like a little staring contest uh, for the better of about 20 minutes. He wasn't going anywhere, but um, he wasn't really posing a threat. Like he wasn't doing any, any like uh, they say they like to bluff charge and stuff like that. He was not. Uh, it was a staring contest for the longest time. I, at this point, I'm pretty much sure I'm clinically insane. <laughs> um, and there's a point where uh, it start, I, I was seeing the sun drop and uh, you know my conscience was telling me that um, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to make a choice here you know you got to get out of here. He's not going anywhere. You have to uh, you know once it gets dark, I mean what are you gonna do? Is he gonna is he gonna come up that tree and kill you or because he was huge, man he was huge. How tall do you think he was? Well, from my angle, from my angle, at, at 30 to 35 foot up a tree, down at 30 yards, he looked to be about six to six and a half feet. But I went back to the spot to retrieve my stuff that I left. And uh, he was, there was a dogwood tree that was right there. And he kept ducking under it. He, didn't, he wouldn't duck his whole body, but he would just like move his he- head a little bit to go under it. And when I went back to retrieve my stuff, that that branch was eight foot, so yeah. he was he was he was better than eight foot. How about weight? What do you uh, think? He, big guy, big guy, probably eight to a thousand pounds. Yeah, easy. And 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 that's what that what that's what was so weird uh, when he popped up onto two feet off the power line. You know, you just take a four hundred pound man that's sitting on his butt. I mean, he's going to have to roll over and do all this stuff just to get to his feet. This guy bounced up like it was nothing. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. I exactly know what you mean on that one. So it, it gets, uh, it gets to be, you know, it's crunch time and, uh, Oh, I I don't want to leave this out. Um, there was a point where he did like a yawn, but it, it was like, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's just something that they do, but he did kind of like a yawn a little bit, and that's when I got to see his teeth, and I got to see the inside of his mouth really good. Okay, tell the audience what you saw because this is critical. Because again, there's so much folklore about Bigfoot. Okay, they really, uh, you know, if you go and look at pictures of Bigfoot and compare it in your mind what you saw, you know, ninety nine point nine percent of the pictures are not accurate. That's that's exactly right. Um, when he did his yawn, his teeth, uh, his front and his bottom teeth, I didn't see no double rows of teeth or nothing like that. It looked like our teeth. They were square like ours. Some people say that these things have like canines and fangs. I did not see that. Maybe they were broken off. I don't know. But they were they were like ours, but they were much bigger. Uh, it was like square chiclets in his mouth. Almost yeah. like horse teeth, but even thicker, thicker and wider than that. They were they were huge. I did not see no fangs or anything like that. The inside of his mouth, his gums and stuff were dark purple. I remember seeing that. Um, 
Now, okay, you saw his face, okay? What I remember, again, you know, their face wasn't totally covered with hair. At least that's what I remember. Now, I only got a quick glance at his face because the way everything played out in my situation. But there was yeah. areas on its face that didn't have hair and it did. And the nose on it does not look like an ape's nose. Again, no. it kind of looks like a nose of a prehistoric man, if I, if I remember right. That's that's absolutely correct. This thing, uh, he had no facial hair at all. He didn't have no beard. He didn't have no mustache. He did have hair like on top of his neck where it connects to the face, but his face was completely bare, and it was solid jet black, and his eyes were, were solid jet black. Like if you look at Jaws, the movie Jaws, a great white shark, how black the eye is. It was exactly like that, except it wasn't shaped round like that. It was it was a little almond shaped. Now, it, it, in my uh, encounter, it didn't have much of a neck. That's the one thing I noticed. Uh, this guy here, it looked it, when he was on the power line. It just looked like a pair of shoulders with a head on top of it. But when he got, they do have a neck. Um, because every time I would draw down on him, he would turn his head to the side, like, don't you do it? But he would not turn his body, and you have to have a neck to do that. Well, I'm, I, I'm talking about a neck like a human. To me, it, what I saw was a, a, a really short neck. Uh, well, what it is, what I think it is, Gary, is they have so much going on in, like, their shoulders and their traps that it hides it. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. That's very possible. Um. So it comes. It, it gets to a point uh, where I had to make a decision, and uh, I put it. I, I put him in the scope one last time, and this time he didn't. He didn't uh, move his head to the side, and I put the crosshairs right between his eyes. Not 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 like dead between his eyes. More up on his forehead a little bit, and uh, I went to squeeze off on him. You know, I did the exhale, and uh, I got about halfway through the squeeze, and I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it, Gary. I couldn't. Couldn't do it. No, because it kind of, re again, it looks humanoid. It looked but, too human. Yeah. I was thinking, you know, if I drop this thing uh, and I go get authorities, you know, a game warden and whatever, are they going to put me in jail for the rest of my life? Is this some kind of people we don't know about that, that the government's not talking about? Um, what's the deal here? I don't, you know, I just didn't know what to do. I'm, th I'm going to say this. If you would have off that Bigfoot. I would have um, probably got ripped to pieces. You you know, one thing. I, I, I've told it so many times. My uncle up Mount Shasta when I was a kid was out bear hunting, and he shot a bear. He thought he had the kill shot. He fired one. He fired two, and the bear kept coming. And the bear literally mauled my, my uh, uncle where he was in the hospital for a month. They didn't think he would live. And he had scars the, for the rest of his life from it. And if it wasn't for his son being with him, it did manage to kill the bear. I mean, could you imagine what one of these would do? I mean, how many shots would you had to, you know, I've been in a situation where you emptied quite a few shots into something and they kept on coming because the, you know, this is, is really weird. But it, not even that. Let's say you would have had a mate or a friend out there. I mean, you oh. know, the situation, you know, if you would have pulled that trigger, who knows? We wouldn't be talking right now, probably. Probably not. I've never made it out the woods. And uh, the rest of this, the rest of this encounter is probably going to tie into that. So um, I am i couldn't shoot him. So I stood up. I finally gave up. It was, you know, I couldn't shoot it. Looked too human. Um, I put my gun on the side of my tree stand and I reached out to him with my hands and I just, I screamed at him one more time and I just said, what do you want? But loud, you know, what do you want? When I did that, every, Gary, everything changed. Everything changed. Uh, he screamed. And when he screamed, I hope nobody in the Bigfoot community or you or anybody else has to see the way that they scream. I that that's you know what I have mentioned about in my encounter. I twice I had one scream. One when we first saw it across the creek when it discovered us, it screamed. Plus, it was on a base of a mountain, so it echoed. That was scary. The second yeah. one when it was by the car, two miles away from where we went in at, 
and it was, it was bending a tree over and it looked at us and it, it just screamed and it was the loudest piercing horrible scream i can ever think about worse than when i tell my wife she can't have any money exactly so uh it was like a draw up from the gut uh and there was so much power in it when he let it loose gary when he let it loose his whole face distorted like his eyes his nose his mouth and his teeth protruded to the front of his mouth and just suck back to normal when he was done. Like there was so much power off that scream. I can remember being in Iraq and a bomb would go off three miles away, but you can still feel the heat off of it. Mm -hmm. It was just like that. I see that scream every day of my life. It's like his face melted when he did it. Then he goes back to all fours and goes back on the other side of the power lines and a lot of people they're like well what did it look like when he was running off the best way i can describe it have you ever seen like a uh it was fast it was super fast but it didn't look orthodox um have you ever seen like a like a big dog run like a like a great dane or something like that it's kind of really lerpy we have two great danes i know exactly what they look like when they run yeah yeah it was like that. It was like, it was really lerpy and unorthodox, but it was super fast. He gets across the other side of the power lines and he is ripping up gallberry bushes by the roots and chunking them out in the middle of power lines. He is knocking trees down. When I say trees down, he's not knocking down like full grown 300 year pine trees, but small trees, he's knocking them down. And he is, he, it's like every 15 seconds, he's doing that same scream. And this is what I'm scared for my life because I don't know if he's going to fly back on my side and, and, and just kill me. I, I, that's what I'm thinking. He's going to kill me. I got to get, you know, I, I've got to get a, I've got to get a number on this thing or it's going to kill me. So I'm up in my tree stand with my rifle trying to get a 20 on this thing. And he is just mowing. He's on the other side of the power lines and he is just mowing down, but he's going further north, which is good. And he keeps going and going and going. And at one point, he flew back on my side. And it just, Gary, it just when he came back on my side, it was so fast. It looked just like a black flash. But he's on my side, but he's north of me. And he keeps going north, north and north and north. And uh, there was a point where I heard like a tree break. It was like a fresh tree break. It was like a snap, crackle, pop. You know, kind of like a ca ca cow, and it, it sounded like it was far enough away where I can just try to make a run for it. So I come out of my tree stand, man, and uh, I get on the power lines, and I'm running for my truck south. I mean, adrenaline is flowing, and I'm running as fast as I can. I wasn't in the best shape at that time. That was two years ago. I was a little heavy at that time. I'm lost a lot of weight since then, and. Uh, yeah, man, I'm running for my life. I get about 150 yards down the power lines, and I, I got whooped because I'm overweight. So uh, a fast run goes to just a very fast walk. Um, I stopped, and I heard something stop on the side of me. <laughs> he is still lighting it up back there. Lighting it up. Uh, I heard something stop on the side of me about 30 foot, 30, 30 40 feet in the woods and i was like okay i start walking and whatever it is in the wood it's matching me step for step step for step i take a step it takes a step i start running it starts running i stop it stops and every now and then i knew it was something on the side of me because when i would make a dead stop it would take one extra step and then stop so now i got something on the side of me and i'm not thinking it's another sasquatch or anything I, i'm pretty sure at this point uh, I'm I'm thinking monster back there, but I'm pretty sure I knew what it was. I just don't remember thinking, oh, this is a Sasquatch. Now, I got to ask you a question, Michael. Were you scared about your life at that point? Were you scared that this is it? I'm done. I, I was scared at my life. I was scared for my life from the point he walked to me on the power lines. I just, uh, I just, uh, I, I was I don't. I, I didn't know what to think. I'm pretty sure. I mean, I seen the size, the the very size of this thing when he first walked up to me. When I first seen him pop up on two feet, I was scared for my life. Um, I'm in survival mode at the whole time. So I'm 
on this power line trying to make it back to my truck. Um, there's a point on this power. Uh, I would say it's probably about an 800 yard run that I had to do down this power line, but th- I hunted this spot a million times. There is a point on this power line where there's this plateau that comes out of the woods and goes about halfway across these power lines. It's not very big. It's probably about that big. It's got, you know, it's got a few trees growing on it. And I always consider that, uh, the halfway point. Well, I'm coming up on that. And the way the woods are shaped, whatever this thing is, that's running on the side of me, it's going to have to reveal itself because the woods is going to run out. It's good. And it's just going to be me, the plateau and it. So I'm a uh, running, running, running. And I see the plateau coming up. I'm, and I'm, it gets to the point to where I see this thing in the woods. I don't see it, but I see, the woods moving. You can tell something's in the woods because I see like uh, bushes and stuff parting on the side of me. So it was still trailing you. Oh, no doubt. He was fixing to inter. It was fi- whatever it was. It was fi- it was fixing to intercept me. Well, maybe he was hungry and he was going to invite you, Michael, to a barbecue that day. I doubt that. <laughs> probably have me for barbecue. That's what I was saying nicely. Yeah. So I get to a point where I see that plateau coming up, I finally get scared out of my, I don't want to cuss on your show, but anyways, I, I cracked the shot in the air with my seven mag. When I did that, everything stopped. Everything stopped. You know, seven millimeter Magnum, that's, that's a, that's a pretty big gun. It's, it, uh, it's kind of big for Mississippi. That's what they use out West for elk and mule deer and stuff like that. Uh, I use it because I don't, I don't, ha- I don't want to have to trail my deer. Uh, everything stopped, Gary, everything stopped. I no longer heard, uh, him back there yelling and screaming, which he was doing the whole time. And I started walking and I no longer heard this thing following me, but I still got, got a, got a ways to go. Probably a good 400 yards. Uh, Mississippi doesn't have any mountains. We do have a lot of hills up and th- and this power line had a lot of hills. And I can remember I crested this hill and I seen my truck. I couldn't, it was still way, way down there. I can only see like the, the roof of my truck. I couldn't see the tires or nothing. When I seen my truck, I caught another gear. I caught a gear I didn't know I had. <laughs> I get to my truck and uh, my conscience is beating me down in my head. It's like, Mike, uh, you need to get out of here. Uh, whatever that was, you're lucky. You need to, you don't need to stick around and, of course, I, you know, I'm not going to stick around. I, I get around to the driver's side door. I stick my key in the door, and I hear one last scream. And it's way back there, but it's not like the other ones. Nothing like it. The, the screams that I heard close to me, it sounded like the difference between a lion, an elephant, and standing next to a freight train. It just, it, it just reverberated your body, your insides. Um, it was nothing like that, uh, Gary. It was it was more like a um, like a baboon screech, and then at the end, like a crack of a whip. It was it was very strange. Now, hey, um, Michael, we need to take a break, and then we're if you got the time, we can go about another fifteen minutes. So, absolutely. Okay, let's take this break. We're going to be back with Michael because I got a lot of questions to ask you from what you encounter when you're done. I mean, seriously, you know, this is bringing back. I'll tell you right now, my, I, I, I tell you, I'm at, at a, at one to 10 level, I'm at 9.5. I'm telling you, I, I'm almost ready to start sweating because it's, it, it's scary. It's, you, you went through basically what I went through. So we're going to be back with Michael. You're listening to night dreams talk radio. We'll be right back. So stay tuned. The ninth Annual Contact in the Desert Conference happens the weekend of June 2nd at the beautiful Renaissance Resort near Palm Springs, California. Join me, George Norrie, to discover what's next from speakers such as Graham Hancock, Richard Dolan, Nick Pope, Stephen Bassett, and over 50 other top researchers. Come make contact with new friends and discover the latest fascinating information from the fields of UFO studies, artificial intelligence, psychic phenomenon, and more. Reserve your seat now at contactinthedesert.com.
Coming to you from the Night Dreams Talk Radio Network newsroom, I'm Guy Ticker with the strange news. Road Ghost, Phantom Hitchhiker. Road ghosts are believed to be one of the most alarming paranormal sightings. Witnesses tend to genuinely believe they are speaking to actual people on the side of busy carriageways. In some cases, it's been reported that road ghosts join people in their cars and even have a conversation. I'm Guy Ticker. The Strange News is brought to you by Night Dreams Talk Radio Network. Do you have a strange story? Contact us at NightDreamsTalkRadio.com. Remember how great paranormal talk radio was in the 80s and 90s? Night Dreams Talk Radio brings back to you talk radio like you remember. With your host, Gary Anderson. Broadcasting to you live from his secret compound deep in the great Northwest. Now, here's Gary. Gary. And here I am, and it's so secret, JC. The other day, I went to the grocery store, I came back, and I couldn't figure out where I live. <laughs> you do that every day. I know. You know, what would you have done, JC, if you encountered a Bigfoot like that? <laughs> well, if I didn't have, you know, like a M50, I think I would. What do you do? You, you know, you need extra clothes for one thing. You're going to need that. Yeah, for a, yeah reasons. right away. If you don't have yeah, if you don't have a big enough caliber gun, look, it's you might as well you, you can't outrun them. So you either got to fight or just hope they don't attack and kill you. Yeah, that's you know I, I I'm really surprised that Michael's still here. He was braver than I was. I'll tell you that, Michael. We are back. You're you know I got to find more. What happened? Uh, you know, uh, I got my truck and um, that road that that I came in had a. You had to go down the road about two miles and then it had a cul-de-sac and you had to drive back through. I wasn't going to do that. I backed my truck in a ditch and almost got stuck. Uh, that that would have been lovely if I would have got stuck. Um, I made it out of there and uh, I get back home. And uh, I live in a city, you know. I live like an hour and a half from the encounter spot. So, uh, you know, I get home and uh, took a cold shower and passed out and pretty much thought it was a dream now i gotta ask you a question are you married i'm not married i was oh were you married at that time i was okay did you tell your wife what happened i did and how did she take i'm just curious because jc tortures me all the time about bigfoot you know you do jc i'm curious how did your wife take it uh I guess she was pretty open to it. I think the hardest part of it was telling my dad. My dad is a, he's an ex Marine. Uh, he was in way city, um, Vietnam. Uh, I think he wanted to believe me at first. I think he wanted to, cause I'm his kid, you know, uh, it took him some time, but I think he believes me now. Yeah. I mean, you know, it stays with you, doesn't it? It doesn't I mean, go away. Does it? I mean, how do you tell people that, you know, I was out hunting and I seen this uh, eight foot creature on two feet, well, ape looking creature on two feet, but it's not really an ape. How do you tell people that without ridicule? Now that's the problem. But you know, let's be honest with you. Like I mentioned, I've interviewed through the years so many people. I, I, I tell you, I've had Michael, a guy on the show who claims he's a Bigfoot hunter, right? He goes deep in the woods. And I've had him on the show a couple of times through the years. And I, I finally said, well, what type of protection do you take when you go out in the woods? Because, you know, up here in the Northwest, you, you, you got cougars, you got bears, you got mountain lions, and who knows what else could be out there, you know? And, and I, I asked the guy, I said, well, what do you carry protection? I got a three inch jackknife. Yeah, he's going to get in trouble sooner than later. Yeah, one of these days, he's going to be one of the missing. That's right. He's going to be on David Pilates show. I mean, you know, when you've seen this, I mean, even if you would have pulled the trigger, I mean, like I mentioned, like my uncle got two 
rounds into a bear and it didn't uh, kill the bear. There was a guy about six months ago up in Alaska that, you know, shot a bear and the bear mauled him. And literally he got his cell phone out and he said, I finally killed the bear. And he showed yeah. the picture of the bear, but you know, one of his eyes was hanging out of his socket. <laughs> I can tell you this as close as I was with the, with a caliber, I had a high powered rifle as close as he was. I probably could have shot the top of his head off and killed him. But what I know now about these things, they do not travel alone. Usually there's usually a couple around the area. I'm pretty sure if I would have made that mistake, I would have probably got ripped to pieces on the power line. Yeah, I don't think you would have made it to your truck. No, absolutely not. That's scary. I wonder, you know, again, what, you know, Bigfoot, when they die, you know, there's talk out there, Michael, that, you know, that they bury them. They, yeah. There's talk out there that they eat them. They eat their cannibals. They eat their dead. I mean, but no one has found a body of a Bigfoot. Now, you being an outdoorsman, being out hunting, you know, if you died out in the woods, your body is going to be pretty much gone in a couple of days, wouldn't it? Well, absolutely, because, you know, what, what, once your body decomposes and stuff like that, uh, um, as far as bones go, uh, as far as, like, finding bones, you know, th you know, throughout the years, there's all kind of, uh, you know, squirrels and stuff. The, the, like, I'll give you an example. Like, uh, there's a lot of people that deer hunt. But after the season, they like to shed hunt, and that what they what I mean by that is when the deer shed their horns, they like you you have a time frame for that. If if you let that go for like four or five months, the squirrels and the stuff eat eat up eat the antlers up to nothing. Yeah. You know? So bones doesn't survive very long out in the woods. No, absolutely not. No, and depending on what part of the country you're at, because, you know, again, there's all kind of little creatures out there that'll drag, you know, different body parts all every which way. I mean, yeah. hey, it's free free food. Why not? I, if you want my honest opinion, and, and I don't know this, I can't state this to be a fact. This is just speculation. I think they probably bury their dead. I think they're quite capable. As big as they are, I think they can bury their dead. That is very possible. Yeah. I did have something else happen to me this year, guys. It was no visual. It was very fast. Um, it took me a while to get back in the woods. It took me a while to get back in the woods. Uh, the, you know, the... The prior hunting season, I couldn't go in the woods at all. And if I went at all it was with a brother of mine or a friend of mine and we would get like a shoot house to hunt on a field next to an actual house you know i couldn't go a mile in anymore or nothing like that um it, it was a bummer and then this year i finally got the nerve to kind of like go scouting again when i say scouting scouting for deer sign and stuff like that and there was a couple times in archery season where i stayed in the dark by myself and kind of got okay this just had you know this happened to me it's never going to happen again <laughs> so i go uh about 60 something miles away from my encounter spot this is dead butted up against the mississippi river uh different kind of terrain i wasn't on high terrain i was in a bottom um i'm gonna try to i'm gonna kind of blow through this a little bit because i know we, we don't have a whole lot of time um it was kind of the same thing i was up a tree uh and it got dark. I was just about to get out of my tree, and I heard a whistle in front of me. This, now, I'm educated now. I've had two years to watch all the YouTube I wanted to watch, and you know this, that, and the other. And uh, I know what they do now. I heard a whistle. It sounded like a human whistle, and I got an answer behind me. <laughs> and then I got a tree knock in front of me, and then I got a another tree knock behind me. I said, I'm not doing this again. I don't blame uh, you. No. Uh, uh, um, this is archery season. So I pull, I pull my, uh, I always keep a pistol with because I have a license to carry, you, you know, it's just for protection. I clipped it to my hip and I come down the tree. And as soon as I put my foot on the ground on this bottom, the whole woods exploded. I had stuff running North, South, East and West of me. Um, 
heavy. Could have been pigs. Not sure. But um, I come out of this bottom, and I always keep three clips with me. Th th three magazines for a pistol. I, I shouldn't say clips because it's a magazine. People correct me on that all the time. Um, I start making this heel uh, coming out of the bottom, and the first thing I hear is a grunt on the side of me. And I, for your viewers, it was very irresponsible for me to do what I did. It's uh, uh, I don't recommend it. It was just it was just primal fear taken over me because of my first encounter. I emptied the magazine in in the direction this thing was running off. It could have been anything. I crest a hill. Same thing happens. I get another grunt to the right of me. Uh, before that, I had time to put another magazine. I emptied the clip. I get to the road. I take off out of there. But this time, I'm not driving. I, I'm driving pretty uh, regular out of there. I didn't want to wreck because coming into this spot, uh, the, the road was pretty rough. You got to have a, a four by four to get in there. Um, I get home. And I'm trying to put two and two together. And I'm just thinking, wow, you know, I mean, maybe it was pigs. I don't know. But, I mean, I don't know any pigs that whistle or, or knock on trees. So it could have been them. I don't know. But you got to understand, when you have an encounter like that, it's, 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 it's really hard. It, you know, once you get back in the woods, any little noise you hear, you think it's them. Well, I you, haven't been able to go back in the woods since early 2000s. You know, I, again, you know, I grew up, you know, going to the woods. I took my kids, you know, out camping, you know, days out in the middle of nowhere, not in a campground. And after my encounter, you couldn't pay me to go back into the woods. I won't do it. I just won't. You know, the odds are ever running across one is like nil. But I, the whole point is, you know, I, I, I would never do it. Now, our time is winding almost to non-existence what do you think about people who go out in the woods and they see bigfoot every time they go out what, what what's your feeling i think uh i think that bigfoot to to a lot of people becomes a obsession and they want to believe it um I, i'm dealing with that right now with a guy that came on my podcast I think that um, it becomes a obsession and a indoctrination, and uh, nine times out of ten, they're probably just trying to make a name for themselves. Don't quote me, but I mean that's just that's my feelings on it. Well, I'm going to make people mad at me, and, and again, th there's a lot of people out there, right? They're doing the circuits, they're talking about Bigfoot, but they have never seen a Bigfoot. You know, or they might have heard things, but, you know, it's like a story I was told. A guy was out in the woods with with his family. He hear, They were looking out for Bigfoot. They hear a tree knock. They knock back. It knocks back to them. They're excited. They contacted a Bigfoot. And then as they decided, well, this is, let's call it a day. They're walking back on the trail. They meet another couple. And they said, we heard tree knocks well what time was it well it was at such and such time then they realized you know they were communicating be between themselves uh i i i don't know where to put it you know uh i the only thing i can do is just tell my story i don't i, I don't i don't have all the answers do i think do i think these things are extra special absolutely um do I think that they're just a, a primate in the woods and just some stupid ape running around? I think they're a lot more than that. But I just don't, um, Gary, I just don't have all the answers. No, you, you don't. And, and the only way anybody is, I hate to say it, is if they stumble across a body or something or manage, you know, they've gotten DNA where, you know, they say the DNA is not humanoid. It's not bare, but it's something in between. We need some evidence. You know, maybe someday somebody's going to find a body part of a Bigfoot or, or something. I don't know. I'm not telling people to go out and shoot one because I'll tell you what. There is crazy people out there that dress like Bigfoot yeah. to, and, and make videos out in the woods. And could you imagine you're out there, right? You're a hunter 
and you see something in the bu- uh, bushes that it, it, it's like a Bigfoot and it scares you and you know you're risking your life so don't ever ever go and and do that and i know that's, one guy that does stuff like that and i'll tell you it's scary i i i have my own show now um it took me a while to do it um i have my own show on uh youtube is it okay if i tell your audience mm-hmm. what my show? go ahead um guys i have uh, a podcast on youtube it is called red creek mafia 777 uh there's I'm the only Red Creek Mafia probably on YouTube. Uh, please go on there and like and subscribe. I'm doing a lot of big things. Um, basically, what I'm doing, guys, is I'm, I'm, I'm doing what you're doing. I'm getting people's encounters and stuff like that. Um, I'm not doing nothing really crazy or, you know, uh, I have a life outside of this. But, um, yeah, that's, that, that's basically what I'm doing. My feeling, you know, I have had... Um uh more head on and uh, some of the he, biggest he was, my debut. he was my debut yeah but here, here's the point you know even him going up there and capturing the sierra sounds you know and all that stuff and going up to his encampment deep you know where they had to take you know horses and, and horse in with mules and all that stuff to get where he was at after so many years what happens honestly when they never encounter a bigfoot then then they start thinking well maybe it's spiritual Maybe it comes from portholes. Maybe it, it it is paranormal. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think it's that. I think it's flesh and blood. I think, again, you're not going to really find a Bigfoot going to a, your local campground or picnic ground. You, you, you're going to have to, you know, if, and if you're out looking for it, the odds are you're never going to find one. But if you're out there, like I was up in the Canadian Rockies, miles and miles from nowhere, and I had our, our encounter, you know, that's where, you know, like where you were at. Okay. I'm sure there's not a lot of people walking through the woods looking for Bigfoot. Um, I mean, I, I have no problem with thinking that they're both. I think they're definitely flesh and blood because I mean, come on, they're leaving tracks and stuff like that. But I'm going to tell you, I think they're special too. I, I, I think they're extra dimensional. I really do. I didn't have that in my encounter. This is, this is doing, you know, my own research and stuff like that after my encounter. Um, I've never had one mind talk to me or nothing like that. And I'm not looking for that. Um, I could just tell you what I seen and uh, every characteristic that I seen was definitely flesh and blood, nothing to do with paranormal. Maybe they, maybe the way he walked to me was a little weird, but, um, I, I have an open mind. I have an open mind. Again, uh, our time is up. Want to go ahead again? Uh, and uh, if you have a Facebook or anything you want to share, go ahead. Um, absolutely. Uh, my name's Michael Bluler. That's uh, B L E U L E R. That's my Facebook. I'm the only one there. And you can go to um, Instagram or Twitter, uh, Red Creek Mafia Seven, and then uh, YouTube. It's going to be. Um, Red Creek Mafia 777. Interesting. Everybody, please check it out. Michael, you know what? I really enjoyed having you on. You know, again, I want to say thank you for your, your service to our country four times. Uh, thank be, you. And, you know, thank you. Yeah. And I just want to also say I, I thank you because, you know, I haven't talked to many other people that have had the same type of descriptions of what I saw. You pretty much matched everything what I saw. And I want to thank you for that too. Thank you, man. Okay. My friend, you take care. And JC, who do we have tomorrow? Boy, we, we got a great, great guest tomorrow. We have Jim Vieira coming on and he's going to be talking about, well, ancient giants and the cover-ups and the conspiracies and what's going on with that. And this guy is probably the leading authority on this field. Oh yeah. And then on the 14th, we have Paul Blake Smith. He's going to talk about when president Richard Nixon got together with Jackie Gleason to go to that military base because the president wanted to show his buddy, well, bodies of E.T. So we're going to be talking about that on the 14th. So then on the 16th, we got a great show, too. Why don't you tell the people about that one? Well, yes, uh, on Sunday, Brian Linnell. Uh, he's well-known within the South Earth 
central eastern Ohio area with Gretchen's Lock and other investigations and ghosts and lures. So that's what he's going to be talking about. Uh, it's going to be a great show there, too. Well, everybody, you know, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do. And, you know, our show is a little bit different than a lot of the other talk shows. We're not full of hype. And, uh, you know, we kind of make it interesting. And we cover, you know, everything from UFOs to Bigfoot to time travel. And we try to make it interesting to all of you. Well, till tomorrow, everybody, you have a good one. We will catch you on the other side. Step again. I thought I might try to win her back, but I'm all out of confidence. I'm a little nervous about coming down, and every new heartbreak hurts a little more. So I 